Hi guys, we are on the next lecture, which is lecture two, and we're going to cover slides nine to 17 today. And please make sure you have something um, to write with. So it could be a packet of paper or a notebook or, or whatever. Just take some notes because at the end, um, if there's an exit slip, you'll be able to use your notes to do the exit slip. So slide number nine, uh, we're going to be talking about cells. Cells are, cells, sorry, um, can be either part of a unicellular organism or a multicellular organism. So just to remind you what those words mean, unicellular is made up of one cell. So think of a unicycle has one wheel. Multicellular organisms, which are those that we can see like us, uh, multicellular mm -hmm. organisms are made of many cells. So a starfish is made up of many cells. Plankton would be unicellular. Um, they're made up of only one type of cell. And usually the unicellular organisms are objects or living things that we cannot see unless there's a microscope. So many times they live in the water, um, like plankton, or they can be things like bacteria that we can't see unless there's a microscope. Unicellular organisms are relatively simple and small. They are the oldest form of life on Earth, and they are everywhere. Examples of unicellular organisms would be bacteria, some fungi, and protists. Protists live in water mainly, things like amoebas and stuff like that, and pl plankton. Bacteria on our bodies outnumber our human cells 10 to 1, meaning for every 10 bacteria cells, there's one human cell. We usually think of bat bacteria as being bad, um, but bad, um, but there is also helpful bacteria too on our bodies, which we'll talk about more. Um, bad bacteria, sometimes we call that germs, and that's because they make us sick, but most of the bacteria that's on our body actually keeps us healthy. They keep anything that's invading out, so there's a prote layer of protection of good bacteria on our skin. And um, they also, we have a lot of really, really important bacteria that lives in our gut, which is our digestive tract, that helps us digest food. So it's really important to keep that healthy bacteria living inside of our, <clears throat> inside of our bodies. Multicellular organisms are larger and more complex. In a multicellular organism, each cell has a specific job. So Obviously, the brain cell's job is different than the heart muscle cell, which is different than a red blood cell, and et cetera. So depending on its job, its shape's going to look different. So in multicellular organisms, every single cell type has a different shape based on its function. So humans are actually made out of 200 different types of cells, and total, we're made over a trillion cells. There's something called the cell theory, and this is a theory that was developed over time as scientists were studying cells. Um, they, they contributed to the cell theory based on their research, and these are the three main concepts about cells that we hold true. All living cells are made of either, I'm sorry, all living things are made of either one or more cells. So to be considered alive, you have to be made of cells. Cells are basically are the basic unit of structure and function in all living things. And cells arise from other cells, meaning they can't just spontaneously appear. A cell had to come from something that was once a cell. So looking at these pictures here, we have to say whether these are living or non-living. So on your notes, you might want to write down like the word living and then make like a t-chart and then write non-living and underneath living you're going to list all the things here that are living and all the things that are non-living so under non-living you're probably going to write fire and you're going to write car and these things are non-living mainly because they're not made of cells and they don't come from cells under living you're going to write a plant and that's like a killer whale um, those would be living all right, number one, I would write the actual question and answer. Um, so if you wanna pause this, so you have time to write it. Um, question number one says, which sentence below is true about cells? I'll give you time to read those. I'm gonna read all of them to you. Is it plant and animal cells are living? 
plant and animal cells are non-living, <clears throat> only plant cells are living, or only animal cells are living? The answer is one, A, plant and animal cells are living. Number two, which statement is true about the cell theory? Is it A, cell theory states that cells are non-living, B, the cell theory states that cells can come from non-living cells, C, the cell theory states that all cells arise from other cells, or D, the cell theory states animal cells are the only type of living cells. Again, you might want to pause this to write the correct answer out, question and answer. The answer is C. The cell theory states that all cells arise from other cells. Number three, how are cells like building blocks? Is it A, cells are tough and cannot be broken? B, cells build on one another to form a structure? C, all cells are weak and break apart? Or D, cells need to be stuck together in order for them to be strong? The answer is B, cells build on one another to form a structure. Last question is four. Which example below shows something that is living? Which of these is alive? A leaf, oven, volcano, or a bike? The answer is A, leaf. A leaf is alive. Okay. We are going to stop there for today. Um, please just go on Google Classroom and finish any other assignments that you have to do.